Hi everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Hashtag Your View on MP1 Sports. We thought we're in London, it's a bit of a strange one, we're at the Premier League recording at the moment, so there'll be a few people going past, but we're going to do an international special for you this week. International football's a big talking point at the moment. A lot of people have probably just gone off the video because it's international football, but we just thought we'd do an international special, as there's nothing else really to do. Um, this week we're going to be talking about how bad England are and why everyone's getting their hopes up and they'll just be dashed when we go out to Iceland. Can Chris Coleman say at Wales, obviously they've just gone out and they're not going to go to the World Cup. And we're also going to be talking about Ballon d'Or nominations, because that's the way to go. So yeah, we'll crack on with it. Right, so without further ado, on this week's episode of Hashtag Your View, I'm joined by Redman TV's Ross Chanley, who is also working with me for Premier Sports Network in London. Ross, how are you? Are you alright? Good week, Tim. Yeah, thank you very much for coming on, Joe. So, no worries. As I said, we're in the Premier League because we uh, <laughs> to miss it, messed it up a bit, but we'll get straight into it, shall we? We've had a busy day. <laughs> yeah, international special, it's all happening at the moment. First topic of discussion was just the matter of England. We've made it to the World Cup. We probably won't win. We'll probably know. get knocked out. And, yeah, and nobody cares. No, <laughs> no, one, no one really cares, if we're being honest. It's all over Twitter. What did you make of England's last two displays? Uh, not very much because um, I didn't watch them. <laughs> I didn't watch them. <laughs> didn't watch them. <laughs> didn't watch them. Um, the, the first one, um, I didn't know who it was. Yeah, yeah, fans, fans. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first game, I didn't even know it was on. Um, cause I just, I don't care about them. And the second no. game, I was aware it was on five o'clock kick. Was it five o'clock? Five, five, five. I just chose not to watch it. And then after seeing the result of the first one, it was like nil nil. It was like this minute winner. It's just the same old boring. And that's why people don't watch them because it's not, it's not entertaining. It's just monotonous beige football. I don't know how you can describe it. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, we're creating adverts watching England's football, and that just sells it there. But no, just give me my opinion. You know, you know, yeah. It's, it's a, an opinion felt by a lot of fans. I mean, the attendances have been down at home. We, we don't play nice football. We've got Gareth Southgate in charge. We've got your man Jordan Henderson in the midfield. He's taken a lot of stick recently. From you. <laughs> From me, especially. <laughs> he can't pass forward. But honestly, what's your view of Jordan Henderson? He, he can. Um, and we had this discussion before of his role in the Liverpool team is to, to win back possession. Get the ball and just play, play to get a Coutinho. So he's not in the England team. Oh, is, 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 yeah, is yeah, well, you don't know if, if he's been told by Southgate to do exactly the same yeah. job as that. Um, if Southgate knows what kind of a player he is, to experiment doing something else with him. But you know what I mean? He's, he's local captain and England captain, it's not for no reason. I know, it's, it's, especially in the Liverpool camp, there's not really much of a choice, but is, is there much choice in, in the England camp? Yeah, but Kane, Kane was getting the, um, the captaincy for the England squad. Ahead of him, this is illegal. So you don't, you don't know what's behind the scenes. What does Henderson bring to the England squad? If, if I'm honest, what does Henderson actually bring for you to the England squad? I don't know because I don't watch England. He's <laughs> <laughs> got a nice beard. Uh, He's got a nice haircut. To be fair, He's got a nice haircut. Got a nice haircut. But if it was you now, and we've got we've got an England squad that isn't living up to expectations, what what would you change within that squad? But would you change the management? Would you change that you would pick players based on form? What, what would you do yeah, I'd pick players based on form and I wouldn't always go for these top five, six teams that people have done. I think there's people out there that have, I don't know, say play for like, like your Burnleys or yeah, things yeah. like that, that are grafters. Tommy and, yeah, should be in the grafters grafters But to be fair, John Hart played really well in, two, in his game. I don't even know how John Hart's got my team. He's a West Ham, do you know what I mean? Yeah. More goals than us. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's like, yeah. that's not what I thought, I thought because someone thought I was just being on someone because he's, yeah, definitely. he's, in that, he's in that mix of people or he's, he's been there before. It's not what playing for your country should be about or, or when you go into a, a competition you pick who's, who's on the best one or who's the best at that time or, or you might have certain positions that you need to fill in, but especially goalkeeper. Joe you know Hart's letting 20 goals, I mean, we've got 20 now so far this season. Yeah. He's going to have no confidence or anything. Why, why are you putting him in that team when someone like you said, Tom Eaton's one of them, Jack Button's another one who's been yeah, in the Yeah, well, all the great people, really. Time. Yeah, but they're not in the same position as, as, as Joe Hart, so why is, yeah. he, why, why is he getting picked? It's just, the same like they've always done for the past, yeah. I don't know, decade, or I'll pick him because he's played for Liverpool, or I'll pick him because he's played for Man United. It's like, you just judge yes men. You need someone yeah. who's, 
he's, he's got quite, I think Sam Allardyce would, would, would have done that myself and he'd not. Yeah, 100% win record as well, so he's been absolutely yeah. fantastic. But in all honesty, you look at the squad on paper, it's a, it's a decent squad. But we're going into games, we're going into tournaments especially, we're just not living up to expectations. I mean, how, how many times have you seen all the flags on the cars when it comes to a tournament? How many a year? And then it just it just doesn't happen. We, we don't do it. We get knocked out by ice. And, yeah. do, you know what I mean? do you know what I mean? It's just not. It doesn't it happen. That could be a question of management set up of the whole development of, of the England team, individual players having bigger egos and Had thinking, and thinking, <laughs> thinking more Wayne Rooney and stuff. <laughs> but like I said, it got to be by ice and they probably went, you get the feeling they went to that game going, it's yeah. only ice and then you think they won it before they set them on the pitch where like, we point about the other players before, don't play for these top teams, we'll, yeah, take, yeah, every, yeah. we'll take every opportunity yeah. and go, grab it by the balls and go after one and give it me all, all in this game. And it doesn't seem to be any like, I know they're in the same camp, we play for the same country, but there's, there's no there's no rhythm. I, I, it must be difficult to find that rhythm when you, you play 10 Premier League games and then you play yeah. a friendly against Azerbaijan or... That, that's and, what, and what I mean, we're getting, we're getting to a stage really where club football can be seen as... Oh, it is, it's, it's, more, it's more entertaining, mm -hmm. it's more challenging than uh, world level. Yeah. So, what, what does a player like that do? And that's what they've got to try and compete with. You watch your team week in week out, which you're passionate about, and then every, every so often you... It's hard for a fan to get hyped up, I think, for a, a friendly, a midweek friendly. Like we played three Premier League games since the season, and then there's an international break. It's like, what's the point? Just, just have four months of football. Yeah, <laughs> play it then. But I mean, it's just, it's just what it is. And it, it, going into the summer, we've got a World Cup in Russia. The fans are probably going to start scrapping anyway, so yeah. our fans will probably lose there as well. That will probably be more entertaining in England on the pitch, to be fair. Yeah, you could just, could be seeing it that way, but. Realistically, where do you think our level could be at this World Cup? Where do you think we'll finish? It all depends on who you can get, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter, does it? Given the Euros, it, we've got an easy ride, apparently. I think, yeah, I, I, I have no expectation. I don't see us getting out of group stage. Really? Don't see us yeah. getting out well, of group stage. I'm like said on paper there, but it's just the same thing. You know, it's going to be the same thing. Yeah, definitely. And then what you get to get out of the group stage, and you think, oh, we're not going to last year. Got no, I'm following someone else anyway. <laughs> Come on, Iceland. <laughs> Come on, Iceland. <laughs> but yeah, that's what we like to see. It's like they're, they're not nobodies, but they're nobodies to us. Yeah. And they're in the same situation like everyone else is in, in, in world football or international football, sorry. And everyone else can do it, but even can't. It's like, I know. that's where it makes me That's why your Germany's and your Brazil's are winning. Well, that's why it comes up the whole development of the whole team, or like the German team, they had they go keep the ranks together and, mm -hmm. and whatever, whereas England is quite sporadic or yeah, definitely. you know, we, we play people like Theo Walcott for, for ten years or even like Oxley Chamberlain and it's like he doesn't do anything for his clubs where you play in in, in international football and you're not gonna, not gonna be on that same level. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean just England as a whole isn't looking great at the moment. Right, so obviously England dire at the moment and so is international football as a whole, but we'll move on to our next topic, which is should Wales part ways with Chris Coleman? They've just gone out of the World Cup, they're not going to qualify after that loss to Ireland. Great game to be fair, not a bad game for international football. Tim Watch that maybe. I don't know why you got me on. <laughs> if you were um, if you were Wales, the Welsh FA, would you get rid of Chris Coleman? No, definitely not. I think people Organisation can be a bit hasty when it comes to getting rid of managers because they don't qualify for uh, tournaments. But I think Wales have seen progression. Yeah. Um, and then you mentioned earlier off camera togetherness, which is what England don't have. Yeah. And they, they, they obviously have it and they've got so far in Euros. Okay, they, they haven't qualified this year, but they're, they're still, you can see they're a growing team and, mm -hmm. and they've got that togetherness is the, is a, the a most important word. It's just a feeling that they play yeah. for each other. Yeah. They're, not, they're not the most yeah. talented. But that's what I was going to ask before when I was talking about England before. Like, they've got their players who haven't got those massive egos and they think they're it. And that's, I think that's where that Camino's fall down sometimes. It's like, they don't look at each other. They look yeah. at each other for blame rather than looking at themselves. Whereas, like, the Wales team are like all grouped together and you know, the, gra the grafters. And I think, I don't think you can put a price on that. I know it sounds dead cheesy, but I'd, like, I'd rather have that in my team than doing just these. People who think like the captains of their own club, or they yeah, just yeah, yeah. it's like that's just not how it works. Um, but yeah, I think Coleman's done brilliant. Uh, I obviously they're disappointed they've missed out, but they haven't missed out by far. And like you said before, the progression that they've made over 
I don't know, 20, 15, 10 years. Yeah, because he's, 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 he's 10 years, years ago they were yeah. coming in, mm-hmm. they weren't getting anywhere near the playoffs. And there was, there was a, there's been stories that Gareth Bale and all the other England players have had a meeting with Chris Coleman to tell him that he is the right man to lead them forward, which I'm sure didn't happen with Roy Hodgson. Was, was it no, he if, if he did, he probably wasn't aware of it, or, or, <laughs> or, 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 or in, in the people were in the room. Um, he was good at Liverpool, though. Well, that's, that's another. That's a whole new video. Um, <laughs> let's not go into that. Um, yeah, they must have faith in him because he. Like, what we already said, like, you know, they, they grab for him and you know, they want to win. They've got a young And he team. seems like he gets into it as yeah. well. Yeah, you know, yeah, I think they, they, like you said, they missed out Gareth Bale a couple of times and any team would miss Gareth Bale. Ronald would miss him when, he, when he's not there, so why wouldn't Wales? Yeah. You know, um, and then they, they've got a lot of young players coming through um, and I think, you know, I would feel about Ashley Williams anyway, but he didn't really, he really didn't help himself last night <laughs> no, yeah. and so far this season. He just looked lazy. He's been yeah, lazy he's, all season. He's been shocking so far this season for Everton, but uh, uh, what I've seen, uh, I've got mates at Everton fans who just, just, just don't rate him. Um, he's got no pace not about him. I don't think he's, he's set up for Everton's team, I don't think he's set up for the, the Welsh team. Yeah. Um, not set up for football, really. Um, <laughs> he's still doing yeah. that in the new boat, Yeah, so. Um, <laughs> And to, to the growing team, got young, young people coming through, and they obviously want to work on the Chris Coleman. So I think it'd be pretty hasty to to, to get rid of him. Um, yeah. And I think you've got the other thing of maybe it's just me being a bit blind, but I don't know who else is really out there that you could say. Could yeah, say true, true. Job. Wales fans, let us know what you think about Chris Coleman. Obviously, we think he should stay. I think he should stay as well as Ross. Um, I think he's done wonders for you. On the flip side, you've got Scotland. Gordon Strachan's in trouble as well. Would you keep Gordon Strachan? I personally wouldn't. I've, it's the same thing for me, um, being half Scottish. Uh, I've seen a little bit of progression with them, but then it's not the same for every, every yeah. team. Um, the, the players that he got at his, at his disposal, um, a lot of them don't play in the best, or don't play for the English clubs or in Europe, they all play in SPL. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a different level, and Tarzan's going to play international level, which is a couple more steps up from that one. There's only one with the SPL, but it's only, everyone knows it's not the same standard. Yeah, true. You know yeah. I mean, you, you have to play for Celtic or Rangers, so you go away to Fife or something. It's, like, it's not the same as play Slovenia or yeah, or, or something. It, it, it's, it's another level, that is, whether that's Strachan's fault, I, I don't think so. Um, but I think this, this year was. The first time they did come really close, and they kind of thought to actually just come, we might do it because most times they've been yeah, getting my off the mark and you know, bothered. Same, same with Wales, really, but I feel like Wales' group was a lot tougher. Because mm. if, if you can look at it in the sense of should Scotland really be better at football than Slovenia? Should they be better than Slovakia at football? We don't know though because you don't know their players. And, and I know, I know, but I'm saying as a, as a nation, should they be better at football than Slovakia and Slovenia? Which they should really. Yeah. Is that's the way. So. That's the way. Is, is, is that Strachan's fault? I don't think so. I think it's, that's that's the progression of other teams around them, um, and just the players that he's got at his disposal. It's the same thing for there. Like if you got rid of Strachan, who would you get in? Would, would they do a better job? And you mentioned the eleven before. But, yeah. But what do you do? Ginger with, Prince. What, what do you do? Uh, Strawberry Bond. What do you what do you, <laughs> what do you what do you do about job? You don't know. It's a, bit, it's a bit of a gamble, but then you don't know the internals of. Other players behind him, yeah, they want to play for him, and then I don't know if anyone likes international football anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right, so he's happy because we're going to move away from international football. Yes. A bit of club news. Okay, yeah. we've had some of the Dortmund nominations, yeah. and in my opinion, got a studio audience. In, in my opinion, got more studio audience. In my opinion, the Ballon d'Or, it's separate from FIFA. But I feel like their nominations are a lot more credible than the FIFA awards, because they had a 55-man shortlist, De Bruyne didn't even get on it, and I said, if De Bruyne wasn't in the team, I'd come for them. He's not even in the nominations list. That's crazy. Ozil and Coutinho. Yeah. What? what you <laughs> You're <possible. laughs> name, name me a better playmate in the, in the Premier. Jeff Hendrick. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Hendricks is a quality player, by the way. I'm not offending any Burnley fans, but Ozil over De Bruyne. Christian Eriksen didn't even get in. They're both better players than 
have been better players continually. Yeah, for, this, for, this, for this year, but we've got the shortlist for the Ballon d'Or award, obviously Messi, Ronaldo and Neymar leading the line. We've got the likes of Coutinho in, in there. Sonny Marley was in it, but he's just got injured. No, he's he just got injured, and we've got also De Bruyne in it, I'm really happy about that, because I think he deserves it. But David De Gea as well, you know, Yeah, David De Gea, what a player. He's coming from a, a City fan and a Liverpool fan. What a player. The best player. Arguably the best goalkeeper in the world. He's, well, he's been their best player for the past three, four seasons. It wasn't for him. You know it. So, going into it, who do you feel could win the Ballon d'Or this year? It's usually it's only between three people. Yeah, I, with Ronaldo, Messi, Neymar, the obvious choices. To be honest, it'd be nice for someone who wasn't a forward or striker to get some sort of recognition. So. Um, I quite like Christian Eriksen, I don't think he's going to win it. David De Gea would be a really good for a goal. David De Gea would be a really good shout. Um, I think De Bruyne's been just as good. Yeah. I think, um, I think he's, got, he's got something like the best assist to minute ratio in Premier League history. It's every 181 minutes, something, something daft like that. He he's yeah. just lights the pitch up and I feel like Chelsea really missed out on him, which I'm so happy about. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I, I, I'd like to see someone away from Ronaldo and the Messi's winning, but they're just two top players. Yeah, I think, I, I think it's always them, them two around. I don't think, I think it's difficult for them to look elsewhere because yeah. people that score 30, 40 goals, or I think Ronaldo scored more goals than he's played games. Like how can you, yeah, yeah, how can you not give someone at that level? His age catching yeah. up with him though, he's dropped off a little bit. But sports in Ronaldo terms, he's dropped off a little bit. Yeah, in real world terms. I don't think the age, age is a thing for him because he's probably got the. Well, he's, he's older than me, he probably got better. He's obviously got he's better. He's older than you. Yeah. And this is a first. I know. <laughs> but he's, he's, he's got the body of someone who's 10 years younger than because of the, the physical condition that he's he in. He's got the body, really. Yeah, I've said what He's not the age of these, is he? Yeah, he's definitely. Got the same with Messi as well, I don't think. Okay, he might have to get old, he might lose a bit of pace, but the, the football awareness that they've got is it's just a different class of everyone else. It is really, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, do I mean, some would say that you know, Barcelona aren't, aren't the team that they were, and obviously they've lost Neymar, I don't think they've really replaced them, got them belly and a lot of it's to do Still made a good start. I know, but a lot, of people, a, lot of, a lot of it is to do with the people around you as well. Mm -hmm. Except it's when people make transfers and stuff, it could be brilliant and they go somewhere else and because not yeah. getting the same service from someone or not in the same system they don't come across as the same thing so um, I, I think Ronaldo would have to edge it for me although I do prefer Messi I prefer, I, I do prefer Messi, I prefer but, Messi but is that just because we're sitting with four fans? I don't think it is, I, I honestly think Messi is the better player I think they're both on the same level, I just personally prefer Messi for some reason I don't know <laughs> Just, Why do you prefer Messi? Go, the Scouser prefers Messi, but yeah. let us know what you think on the Ballon d'Or. I think that just about sums it up. So, Ross, thank you very much for coming on this new show. Welcome. Hopefully everything goes on at Red Men TV. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much for getting your views across. Obviously, it really makes the show work. Let us know your views for next week. Obviously, football's back. Club yes. football is back. Football. Liverpool versus United. Yeah. You and Nick have got a bit of rivalry, but yeah. thank you very much. I'm for <laughs> <laughs> well, it can't gash anyone's face this time. But thank you very much for watching this week's show. Give us a give us a, give our website a read. Obviously, we all write content on there. MP1Sports.com. Give us a look on social media: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And again, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next week.